Good morning. Welcome to the 2013 Federation of Genealogical Societies Fort Wayne Conference, Journey Through Generations. I am Eric Basir from Evanston, Illinois. This is session F319, F as in Frank, 319. It is being recorded. So be careful what you say. <laughs> I, I need to be careful what I say. Uh, title, Image Organization Made Easy. The syllabus material begins on page 280. My speaker biography is on page Roman numeral 32 of the conference guide. Please silence all electronic devices and please refer to the recording, social media, copyright, and photography policies in the front of the syllabus and the conference guide. <sighs> and uh, we're going to do some questions. Every once in a while I'm going to say any questions. Definitely shoot your hand up there. But uh, generally I want to just kind of take questions as I get through various segments or at the end. But if you're burn, if you got a burning question, like what did you just say? You know, feel feel free um, to raise your hand. Image organization made easy is a relative term, of course. Uh, I will attempt to make image organization easy for you. Now. I did my survey, so I know a lot of you are not. A lot of you are using Photoshop Elements, which is perfect because that's what we want to deal with here. My recommendation for organizing your images is quite simple, and you may have another way, or have or have learned another way. This is the kind of way that I will. This is the method I'm going to focus on for this morning's workshop. Number one is one spot for all the images. That means basically one uh, folder, one um, main dumping ground for all the images. And you may say that sounds very disorganized. You'll see as we move on. The second part in the planning stage is using a database or software. And one really good software database program you can use is something called Organizer or Bridge, which comes with Adobe Photoshop Elements and Adobe Photoshop. The, the Organizer component is actually built into it, so it's not like you have to spend extra money for it. The other is file naming, so we'll get into that. File naming is important. More so that it's consistent, no matter what you do. And the other part is scanning it, so getting it down. So don't start the scanning until you have all these steps in front of you. Otherwise, you might end up having to rescan it, or you might get frustrated. We don't want to do that. In, in the handout, uh, I'm basically kind of following that but in the handout, I do have a few changes that, that I will announce, a few minor changes. So the one spot concept, again, we're taking our documents, our images, we put them in a folder, we scan them to a folder on the computer. So one computer, one drive, and hopefully you have a backup, you're backing up everything on a regular basis. And when we have those files, we apply something called keywords to them. They're also known as tags. And if you want to do the cataloging right, almost on the, on the level of, a, of an archive or a library, you'll use, you'll use keywords or tags. Um, if you're going to save your images and documents to more than one spot, different drives, different folders, you should have a really good reason for it. Make sure you're convincing yourself that I need to do it this way and this, this is why. Now, um, the database software, that, database slash software that I talked about, Adobe Photoshop, I, I prefer those of you who 
are thinking about it or have heard about it, uh, it's very affordable. And the latest version, I believe they're at 11 now, right? And it's a much better interface than 9, which is the one I'm using here, but it really hasn't changed. And the interface is quite flexible. Now Adobe Photoshop, and I'm on a, I'm really, I really want to boycott all Adobe products if I could, because they have this new subscription program. So they're making professionals like myself rent the software, which I think is atrocious. Um, but Adobe Photoshop includes Bridge, and Bridge I just absolutely love. Organizer is like Bridge, but it's not as customizable, not as fancy. And I like to use the fancy stuff. That's just me because I do this for a living. Extensus portfolio is definitely worth a look. And uh, this is what you would consider a dedicated database. And this, this is the type of database that big companies, even small companies, use to archive their work, in, in their movies, their documents, their pictures, their files. Steep learning curve, but if you're a geek like me, uh, it's, it's, it's lots of fun. So I talked about two different types of things that we're going to be archiving, documents and photos. So where do I come across, wh how do I distinguish between the two? It's not as easy as you would think because some photos have uh, text in them and some t documents with text have photos in them. So they actually have to be treated a little differently uh, in your process. This is what I recommend. It's a photo. I consider it a photo if there's, uh, the text is less than 25% of the image, approximately. You, know, you don't have to sit there and calculate it, but just eyeballing it. It's a document if the photo is less than 25% of the image. And of course, if there's no photo, it's a document. And if there's no, if there's no text, it's a photo. And also, photo includes artwork, artwork as well. All right. Now, when we when we uh, scan, I just want to make sure I didn't skip this part. Good. I want to jump back real quick to the document. Uh, your your documents should be scanned at as saved as PDFs. If you can, if you can. Uh, if you're able to do that. And the reason why, if you can do what's called optical character reader and you have that type of software, it will actually read the letters in the text. And that'll make indexing, that, when your computer indexes the documents, it'll make searching much easier, <coughs> your documents. Of course, it has to be in a, a not handwritten text, but a typewritten text. The photographs, of course, should be scanned as JPEG, right? Oh, good, good. Whew. They should be saved as TIFF, T-I-F, right? Right. Now, if you if you're scanning stuff on an inexpensive scanner or or something like the FlipPal, you're stuck with JPEG. All right. So just keep in mind that if you work on it, save it, close it, you will degrade the quality each time you do that. So if you do save it as a JPEG uh, and you need to work on it, please uh, save it as a TIFF and then work on that. Therefore, the compression quality won't keep being compromised. That's for another class. Question. Yes. <laughs> if you open it and look at it, but you do not edit, the quality does not diminish. Is that correct? Your JPEG is perfectly fine without you working on it. Okay. Right? But Depending on the quality of the JPEG, it may not be an optimal scan. So, but that's the answer to your question, and you are correct. Now, the, uh, the 100% handwritten documents, where you see cursive and, and you see beautiful calligraphy, all right, these types of things, I would s treat them as an image, as 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 like a photo, and I would save it as a TIFF. I would save it as a TIFF. Unfortunately, with scanners like HP, they have this dry, they, their software has this annoying ability to, uh, to, and it's their hardware too, to, I don't know, it's saving it as a JPEG, even though you tell it to save as a TIFF. 
and you'll see compression artifacts in it. And that's why I always recommend Epson. But again, I'm, I'm drifting into another class, but I just something I wanted to throw out there for you. Epson is a very reliable, extremely reliable and high quality manufacturer of affordable scanners. Now the PDF, if you have any typed words with handwriting, that, I think it's good for that. As long as there's typed text in there with a little handwriting. And of course with your keywords that we'll talk about later, you can uh, make keywords that refer to the handwriting if you're able to read it. It's in a language that you've been able to translate. Now the other part that we mentioned earlier, we talked about file naming. I see, I see we have some people following me, so I'll slow down a little bit and let me see if there's any questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you have, uh, at this point, hundreds, thousands of JPEG files, would you recommend converting them all to TIFF? If you have hundreds or thousands of JPEGs, leave them as is. Just if you're going to work on them, <coughs> save it as a TIFF. All right? Save it as a TIFF and then work on that. That's the best you can do. From, from here on, now you got religion, you, you, you do it the right way, all right? The, 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 uh, the priest here has, has blessed you to go on to paradise, image paradise. Um, so file naming. For scanned images, uh, I have these, uh, these suggestions. Manually sort your images into groups by date. Generally. So you, this is approximately this time, this is approximately that time, if you don't have specifics. You can say eras, that type of thing. You knew that this was your, your, your grandmother's time or your mother's time or your time growing up. Whatever, you could say the 1980s, the 1960s, etc. I like to use the date of my scanning session in, in front of the file name. So when I'm using something like Epson, like an Epson scanner, I can actually do, and we had this in another workshop, where you can actually put these in there. But for now, we're just going to talk about my suggestions, what you could type in manually. So the year would, would be 4, 2013, the month, 08, and the date, 23. And then you can do a dash with a serial number or some type of slug which I would say a slug would typically be something like uh, you know Cincinnati uh, relatives something like that something short I put in here Choi family for example now camera images can be tricky but you can make camera generally depending on the quality of the camera you can make uh, adjustments in the camera settings for file names but my recommendation is when you import your camera images, digital camera images, just keep the file name. Uh, generally, your camera will keep unique file names quite well where you shouldn't be accidentally overwriting uh, the, the file name. <coughs> Any questions? So now we're talking about the scanning, all right? So I said we could group them. We could group them by era. Another suggestion, grouping them by the media type. Is this a print? Is this film? I'm going to just be doing film scanning, let's say. I'm going to focus on scanning the film. So I'm going to do all that first. By dimensions, we're going to just scan the large pictures or are you just going to scan the little pictures? And of course, collection source is best because then you know who you got these from. And that's helpful. And of course, there's the no process. And you can have one box. Uh, and you stick everything in there and you just go through it and scan it. And that's what type of person I am. <laughs> and I'll explain to you as we get on uh, how that is. Um, you have, by the way, when it comes to scanning and all this stuff, you have my email, you have my website. I have, I have a good couple hundred hours of videos, free videos on YouTube. Then I got videos and things you can buy. I have a course out there at Booth 221. But um, I have so much out there for you, you'll be all right when it comes to doing this kind of thing. Um, our, our next big thing, and this is my favorite part of the talk, and I'm glad I got there before, right at 15 minutes here. Um, metadata is your friend. 
and you you you'll be noticed on the genealogy uh, 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 blogosphere. You're gonna start seeing this word a little bit more. Raise your hand if you ever heard of metadata or metadata. Right, exactly. That's right. So th this is metadata is basically information. All it is is information about a document, about a photo, about a file. That's all it is. And it's, it's classified in many different levels. Your di modern digital cameras, the latest digital cameras, automatically put metadata in so you know what the shutter speed was and what the date was, what the GPS, the moon phase, every I mean, it's got everything. So you got more than enough. But there's still something that it will never give you. And that is factual data about the file, about the picture, about the documents. And there's all kinds of metadata uh, fields uh, that uh, you can choose from. So we're going to get into that right now. And we have just three fields. I mean, you, there are so many metadata fields, it's, it's really confusing. But there's three fields that, you know, I want you to be concerned with. Now, I have a picture open right here in Photoshop Elements. All right, and I will show you. Right here under File, File Info. So I want you to write that, write that down if, if, you, if you can. We're going to focus more in elements uh, because I see a lot of you are elements users and file info and we have three fields that I'm showing you here one is title now it's called document title but it's the same thing title then we have description and then we have keywords and these are the only fields that these 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 are the only fields you need to worry about. And when I say worry, I'm I'm being serious about that because you need to put the information in there. Now, generally, well, for the most part, when you go to file file info, this is what you're going to see, nothing. And it's going to be up to you to enter the information. Now, these Keywords, I said title, description, keywords. I'll call it TDK. We'll use an acronym. Someone told me, are you going to use a lot of acronyms and keyboard shortcuts? And I'm like, no, I'm not. But I, here's my NASA acronym, TDK. All right, so if you hear me, it's title, description, keywords. If you hear me say that, that's what it is. So your title is always going to be short. Your description should always be full of the information that you know or that you can find. The who, the what, the why, the when, the where, and the how. The keywords are description terms. They're relevant words and phrases, relevant only to the picture. Not things like cute, <laughs> photo, <laughs> uh, square, <laughs> you know. It actually has to be a little more specific. So here's what we're going to do for the title. This is from my collection. This is from my personal collection. So I, we're going to work and we're going to fill in the fields. All right? And we're going to pretend, you're going to pretend that this is yours. All right? So I want you to be thinking as we go along. So a short title for this might be Move the uh, box, Eric, so they can see. Um, uh, you don't know what it is, right? This is like, I don't even know, is that really you over there holding that steering wheel? Yes. But let's pretend you don't even know that. But you know this is something in your family photo collection, all right? So raise your hand. What would be a short, concise title? I want you to, how many librarians are in here or archivists? Profession, I mean, people who work as, Archiving libraries, raise your hand. Okay, we've got a couple. All right. So feel free to, you know, don't intimidate anybody, though. You said we know the family name. I would make sure and put the family name on that for titles. Family name or title? Man and boy on water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> out of gas. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, so we got someone says, we, we, we should have something family name related. We had another person that said, a man and boy on boat. And we had another person that said, out of gas. All right, perfect. Do we have the family name? We could say, we could actually get away with this. Eric, Bill and Eric on water, or Bill and Eric on pontoon boat. Bill and Eric on boat. That would be close. Bill, if we said Bill Anderson, Eric Bond, Bashir, it starts getting really long. All right, so we keep it really concise. So Eric, everyone's close. And now, out of gas. No, that's a subjective title. But I'm glad it was brought up, because actually I have it in here. I said, uh, such an example of here comes trouble would be inappropriate, <laughs> right? All right, because you had to think. You had to think, 100 years from now, people are going to have access to our images generally, if we've been passing it on properly. And it might even be on some huge global database. We want it to be clear. We want people to be able to find these images. We want relatives and descendants to find these images. So I'm going to put in, and of course you, uh, I'm going to say on pontoon. We could say on water, but the one, if I said on water, eh, that could mean I'm on the beach. That could mean, I want to be just a little more specific if possible. All right. Now. Next, description. All right, description. Now, here's where we can embellish, but with facts. All right, we don't want to hypothesize too much. So, this is, where the this is where we get real specific with family names, ages, right? Date, location, who we got it from, all right? Uh, what this thing meant. Is this a vacation or was this punishment? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, we have to be specific. So I'm going to go around quickly. So raise your hand if you can come up with a description for this picture. Be, I know you don't. You're like, I don't know what it is. I don't know who these people are. But this happens, right? You have images that you don't know. So let's be little scientists with it. Yes, ma'am. Date and location. Date and location. All right. Good. So the so what we want to do we want to definitely include the date, and but what like the month, day if possible right. Be as specific as possible with the date. Be as specific as possible with the location right. Yes, ma'am. But who are Bill and who are Eric and are they related to each other? Exactly, exactly. And so that would be my job, right, as the person with the collection, to confirm. I would hopefully find maybe Eric's, you know, in a retirement home or something. I don't know. Do you remember this man? You know, oh, that's my Uncle Bill. That's my mother's brother. Oh, okay. You know that goes in there. And then you should actually say, according to Eric, this is his uncle so-and-so. Got it? And you can put that in there. Description field can be really stuffed with information. Um, another hand. Yes, green, why, yes. Why you're on the boat, are you running whiskey or are you? <laughs> why, are, why are they on the boat? Bootlegging, running whiskey, avoiding the feds, you know? Um, they're coming after him because he doesn't want to rent Adobe software. Um, yeah, so the reason, all right, and, and there was another hand way in the back. Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. They're very similar, but they're different pictures. So how do I name them, dip, title them differently? Yes. You, and then can I put, and then we have a document that has all the names of everybody in the picture. Yes. Can that all go So the you have four wedding pictures. I'm repeating this for everyone and my own brain. You have three wedding pictures, and they're from the same if wedding. Same wedding anniversary, but there are different people in the pictures, right? It's like slightly, you know, maybe different cousins, in, right, scattered throughout. How would you title it, right? So I would title it, I would give it the same title. I would say 
uh, you know, the, the, the Smith's 15th wedding anniversary. And it would, they would all have that title. I would give them all that title, but the description is what would be different. The keywords is what would be different. So let's, let's come up with what I did. Now in your handout, I actually describe all this. So here, here we go. Bill Anderson with Eric Basir. And you know what, just for time, I'm just gonna open up my one, because I, I do like to like, do it with you, but you know, I, I really want to go through it, but I'm going to zoom in so y'all can see it. So, whoop, come on. Get over there. Y'all can see that? Bill, Bill Anderson Wright with Eric Basir, age five, on a pontoon boat in the Ozarks, Missouri, USA, in May or June 1979. Eric recalls steering the boat and feeling quite nervous despite the big smile on his face. All right, so that's somewhat subjective, right? But that is a fact that I got from myself. Like myself told me that. <laughs> you were very nervous. And, and Eric, blah, blah, blah. this was from, a fa from an extended family vacation with many relatives on the Anderson side, because guess what? There's other relatives and other family, right? So now, is there something I should, yes ma'am? Who took the picture? Yeah. Great. Eric does not know <laughs> who made this picture. But maybe something about Bill Anderson that you might have known or found out, like his age or his relationship. Specific, or his relationship. So something about Bill Anderson and his relationship to Eric. You know, Eric also mentions that uh, Bill made him feel less nervous you, you, you know what I mean we could say Uncle Bill right but you see, see look at you didn't say Uncle Eric you know you see you see you see how the process works so I don't necessarily know it all so I'm just work you're helping me refine it and getting better but I want you all to think like that yes sir you said there was is it unlimited the size of the text you're putting in here? I I, I don't I know if it's unlimited, but I have really put a lot of text <laughs> in these fields and I've never gotten an error. You know, it depends on the interface and how it's being read generally, because sometimes, you know, Photoshop Elements actually will take your description and, and show it more like a short title and it'll be truncated. But it won't be cut off, it's just you gotta stretch out the window. Um, and some other uh, databases might do that. But generally, when it comes to real, like if you submit images online to, to online collections, description's gonna be very easy to read. I wanna jump to keywords, but go ahead. One thing we haven't mentioned is the lake. What lake? I haven't mentioned the lake, exactly. What lake, could, would, would I know what lake it is? I mean, this could be important. Unfortunately, I don't. It's the Ozarks, right? But, but there's only one lake, okay? But, but, but she, she may not have known that, right? So that would force us to go get a map and check. Is this Ozark Lake or is this Lake Ozark? You know, so, so but these, she's just bringing up suggestions. So that's, that's the way we want to think. We want to think critical about these. All right, so I give you much more detail about to try to get you to think inside the handout for the description field. Be sure you look at that uh, later. Now, if it was an completely unknown, this is what I came up with, and I, I don't want to take time to type it, I'll just read it to you. Unknown picture of adult and child with curly hair on boat in water from the Judy Bond collection. Judy stated this photo was given to her by her ex-husband's Aunt Bernice Bradley, and there was no other information. So someone who opens this, who sees this, they say, oh, but curly-headed boy, but she has no idea, right? Says, so, but maybe it might be Eric, you know? Depends how many curly-headed boys you have in your family. Keywords. Now this is the most important part of your files. If you don't have a title, if you don't have a description, you gotta have keywords, relevant keywords. 
So here's what I picked. And these, these are actually from the real image, just like the description. 1970s, 1979. And you know why I said 1979, right? That's when you were five. Well, there's a date stamp at the bottom left corner. I don't know if y'all can, can y'all see that? I found a clue, right? Look for clues, right? Now, right, the camera. But back then, with these photos, that was the lab that did that when they made the prints. So the photos might have been actually shot in May, but they could have been shot last May in 1978, right? Because we would sit on film, right? And then we'd be upset. Why are there all these light leaks and discolorizations in it? All right, so uh, 1980s, two. Why am I saying two? Two people. You don't understand what? Five. Five is the age. Yeah. Adult. America. Anderson. Basir. Bill. Boy. Child. Curly. Curly hair. Because what could that curly could be like, you know, curly shoes or something. Right? Curly dress. Driving. Eric family. And I even misspelled my name in there. Why did I do that? Uh, <laughs> Oh my God, that's a messed up thing. I've never misspelled my name. Um, my God, and I did, I went over this and over this. I'm like, yeah, everything's perfect. Yeah, but, but in a sense, that is good to do because sometimes you don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe it was E-R-I-C-K, you know, before <laughs> something happened, you know? You don't know what people are going to be dealing with. But if you know it's incorrect, don't put it in there. Uh, Judy Bond collection as a phrase. June, Lake, Male, Man, Missouri, Ozarks, Pontoon, Boat, Pontoon, Boat, Boat, Smiling, Steering, Steering Wheel, Summer, Sunglasses. Why am I saying sunglasses? He's wearing sunglasses. Because you might, I remember a picture of Uncle Bill, he wore these sunglasses one summer. Oh, well, type Bill, sunglasses. You're like, that's him, that's it. I remember those sunglasses. And then all of a sudden they tell you something for the history book, right? USA, vacation, water, young. Yes, sir. You put in multiple word phrases. Will it find individual words in the phrase? It depends. Okay, if you put multiple word phrases, will it find individual words in the phrase? It depends on the way it's being searched. If you upload it to some database, it depends on their protocols. If you look on yours, it depends on yours. I like to cover all the bases, right? So I may not say red lipstick. <coughs> I may say red as a keyword, then I'll do lipstick as a keyword. But I won't go red, semicolon or common, lip, colon, a semicolon, stick. Because stick is like stick and lip is, and lipstick is something different. <laughs> so, you know, but I would put it like that. Or put lipstick as one word. Yes? Do you have in your own mind the difference between using the, uh, the Roman numeral two and having the word two? Does that trigger something different in your mind? You, you know, that's a good question. So if I had to do Roman numeral two, number two, or, number two. or I, would, I would look at the relevance to the image. Because I don't know if we generally, you know, here in, 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 in America, maybe even the West would use... Two. I didn't mean Roman numeral two. I meant oh. both the number two and the word oh. two. Oh, 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 oh. And does the word two, do you use that only for ages, for instance, or something? I'd use it for both. I'd okay. use the, the, the Arabic number two for... Two people, two years old, two plates, whatever. By the way, I did want to say something about the Roman numeral, though. You know, World War II. So I would go WWII, right? And I would do WW2. And I would do World War II as a phrase. Got it? I would do that as well. What about spacing, like with World War II? I mean, would you put WW space two, or would you smash it all together? I would put it together. Because I've seen when you do searches online for images, World War II, you'll find a lot WW2, you know? Yes? If I look at that and saw the two and the five, I wouldn't know what that is. I would say, I, I would add the word five years old and two people. So you would look at five, you're like, man, what does five have to do? I would rather write five years old or five people. 
That's the thing with keywords. You want to make it so that anyone can search it, not just yourself. You know, so you want to keep it relevant, but at the same time, objective, not subjective. That's two years old as well. If you could do two years old as well, that's fine. Wouldn't you also then spell out five? Yes, I would spell out five, and it, I didn't do that here. I, I, you know. <laughs> but see, that's why I'm here, so we work together, because you're thinking and you're saying things that are helping other people think and say things. Yes, and then I've got to move on. you have a common or a last name that is often misspelled, would you put in the various common misspellings? Great question. So I've got, I've got an ancestor in here, and they spell it Anderson, and then they spell it Anderson, and they spell it Anderson. So I've got three different spellings of one name. And we're not sure which one it is. I would put all of them in. Or even if you know which one it is, but other people might search on the alternate spellings. If you don't, if you know for sure this is how it was, but this is what the birth certificate, this is what it said in the land record, the church parish, all that stuff, and it all is consistent across all the records, I would not put the misspelling in there. Okay. I wouldn't. Um, even locations. You know, for example, if you do some places in other parts of the world, you know, and they got diacritics on the letters, right? I would use the diacritics, but then I might just use the regular English, you know, as well. Um, but it can be tricky because depending where you're uploading the image to and how they're handling it, maybe, maybe Ancestry or uh, Family Tree Maker might already accommodate the other languages. So if you go and you you add your, your, your umlaut or whatever, it, it won't read it properly. It'll translate as some other odd character. Um, so can, can you hold your question? Please don't forget it. Write it down. I want to get the documents. Because after this, I want to get to the database, <laughs> which is really cool stuff. Um, they say this is known. So, <clears throat> this is a letter I received from uh, my representative in Congress. So, you'll find documents like this as well. Yeah, all right, whatever. So, I made two versions. I made a, a regular scan because you see. We have handwriting, I thought, yeah, let me, make, let me make an image of this, all right? That's this one. Then I made one which was called OCR, Optical Character Reading. And that one actually allows you, I'll show you. Hmm, I guess this one, oh, this was the note. This, this should be the one here. No, that's not it. I have to open it. That's why it's not working, because i got to open it in Adobe Acrobat. Anyways, when you open it in a PDF reader like Adobe Acrobat, you can actually highlight the text, copy it, and paste it. It's, it's very useful. Some I wanted to throw in there, not fully related to the topic, but it is sort of related because your computer can, will search that PDF for text, and this would come up. So when she says in here, manufacturing of plastic bags and I search for that it'll it'll pop up now here's the safest way to do this and just like I told you before metadata is your friend so this is a letter it's called plastic bag ban <coughs> I'm capitalizing sorry I'm typing too fast never do that response letter. I wrote, the, I wrote my congressman a letter. I said, I find these plastic bags all over uh, my yard. I find them here. I find them there. I saw this image and I explained to her I saw this footage of, of in the Congo and in Africa. They, they have layers of plastic bags. The farmers are digging out plastic bags. I mean, they're all over. We got to ban these things. I was so frustrated. So she wrote me back. <laughs> right? So this is, this is history, right? But this is history, right? You know, my, my great, great, great grandchildren might say, yeah, dad, that was pretty radical, you know, <laughs> for his time. You know, this is part of history, whether they agreed with it or not. This is the fact, all right? So this is a plastic ban response letter. 
So now what I do is I, I type up, and you know I'm, I'm just going to read it to you because we'll be here too long. But this is what I wrote. Response letter from United States Congress Representative Jan Schakowsky to Eric Basir regarding, let me, let me let you guys, I want to zoom out just so you can see what I'm talking about. Regarding plastic ban pollution legislation dated February 4th, 2011. Chicago, uh, concerned with large amounts of plastic bag litter in his neighborhood and news about problems worldwide, Eric sent a letter suggesting a law to ban plastic bag manufacturing. Excuse me, Eric is unsure if anything of consequence resulted from it from the Eric Vasir collection. You see? I didn't write anything about these nasty, you know, people with their dog poop in their bags and leaving, you know. I didn't, I didn't, I just kind of dealt with the facts. I just dealt with the facts. And we could also say Eric would complain about the dog poop in the bags that the neighbors would leave, you know. But I want you to think about that for your descriptions, for your documents, okay? And notice my description really just refers to the letter. I'm not going too far out. I'm not going to write a novel. I'm not going to write a short story. Or the reasons why they should be banned. Or the reasons why. I'm not going to argue that, right? That's for my other book. Um, now, again, we have the who, what, why, when, where. And I have some details in here about this. In this example I'm showing you, I, I give you in here so you, you can see it. But we, you know, we want to also remember how we obtained it. So the Eric Basir collection is important. Now, if it's an unknown document, you definitely you'll have fewer things to write uh, because you can just you have fewer things to worry about because you can just deal with the facts. There's, it is what it is. It's a letter to him. It's a letter from her. It's dated this time. You know what I mean? It's clear. Uh, keywords. So keywords. So some keywords that I chose for this, and, and, and I want you to remember your keywords. Here's a tip. Your keywords, your first keywords, your easiest keywords come from your description. So if you're not sure, what keyword should I start with? Well, start with the ones from the description. So in this case, 2011, the number four. Because why? Why would I say the number four? Because the date. Ban, Basir, Congress, Correspondence, Environmental, Eric, February, Garbage, Jan, Janice, because actually her full name is Janice, so I don't know, someone may, she may go down in history as actually Janice Schakowsky, even though she says call me Jan. Legislation, letter, litter, manufacturing, member, plastic, why would I say member? Congress, Congress member, exactly. Plastic, pollution, response, sale. What sale? Why would I use sale? The sale. sale of plastic bags. Selling trash in the United States. And anything else, yeah. Does the keywords um, automatically go into alphabetical order after you put them in? Or do you think that way? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think alphabetically. Um, but... Uh, when you sort them and work with them in an organizer or bridge, it forces them into alphabetical order. Yeah, that's like, oh, that's so neat, Eric. You really just... <laughs> that's why I didn't see you at your table at the end of the day. You were up there putting everything in alphabetical order. Um, when you said letter, I would also use correspondence. Letter, correspondence, any other keywords? These are excellent uh, suggestions. Any other keywords? Assistance. Assistance? How would assistance be relevant? Because it's assistance from your representative. That's ah, assistance from the representative. Jan's wow. last name. What? Jan's last name. Jan's last name. Schakowsky, yeah. I didn't I did I did mention that, yeah. Maybe the is Washington, Washington DC and Evanston. Washington DC, Evanston. These are good keywords to use, yeah. All great. All great keywords. What about uh, what about the letter initiatives. initiative? Eh, nice maybe. Initiative could be a little subjective. 
It could be a little subjective because I've got to think a little bit about that. What about, what about appreciation? Because she wrote in here, I appreciate your letter. And legislation. No. I, yeah, legislation, yes. But appreciation, no. Even though she said, I appreciate you. <laughs> but this is, if this was a letter of appreciation, then yes. But this is not a letter of appreciation. Right? So it's, 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 it's kind of tricky to, 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 to work with that. So, when in doubt, use too many. Is this what you're saying, though? N when in doubt, use too many. No, I'm not saying that. Less is more, but relevance. Relevant keywords. I want you to think relevant keywords. Got it? When you donate your collection to such and such archive or library and you have the metadata like this, oh, they're going to love it. They're going to love it because they say, oh, this person knew what they were doing. We don't have any work because that's what they have to do, right? Any of y'all done any indexing with keywords and having to do keywords and extract information to, so that people can search it? Yeah. So if the, half the work is done for you, you feel pretty good, right? Makes, makes it go by a little faster. Even though your list of keywords is longer than the letter, <laughs> well, is the list of keywords longer than letter? That wasn't that list wasn't longer than the letter, but that's a good point. Yeah. It shouldn't be yeah. that long. That that means you have a lot of irrelevant things. All right, so let's go into organizer because we are uh, on the clock here. All right. So let me let me move out of my screen. Oh, it's shoot. Oh, the window uh, shrunk on me because of the adapt uh, the projector. All right, give me a second. Good, I've got it in my recent, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so organizer, organizer, organizer. All right, organizer is built into Photoshop Elements. There's a button at the top right of the screen, but it's hidden because I'm connected to the projector. So um, I'm actually opening it from a recent list here. And we are going to, now with Organizer, we're going to add a collection of images. And we're going to start applying keywords. It's, here I showed you how to apply keywords uh, image by image, right? What about, what if I have similar images? Like, you know, the student back there who said, I have four of the same wedding image, but slightly different groups of people, right? But I don't want to have to redo or, or copy and paste and then cut out. Like, is there an easier way to do it? And there is. So here we go. File. And we're going to get new images from files and folders. We're going to connect to a folder. And here's that folder. And there's a whole bunch of them. And the window says, get media from this folder. And I'm, and I'm selected everything in there, just to be safe. And it found 10 images, and it's bringing them all in. Now, Elements has this little window that pops up. It's, it's very annoying to me. I don't know why it comes up. It should be by default that they do this, but it's OK. It says, these, these photos have keywords in them already. Do you want them? Yes, I want them. <laughs> Why would I not want them? Um, so I click this little button here that says Select All. And there's an advanced button here that allows you to rename or use existing keywords. I wouldn't mess with that right now. Just get the stuff in there. Play around with it later. And it's getting the media. It's applying the tags, all right? and. We're going to, it says, you know, do you want to, we're only showing you what you just imported. Well, this is all I imported, so that's all you can show me <laughs> right now. But it does that to help you stay on top of things in case you do another 20. You know, oh gosh, did I already import those? So it's just doing that for you. So anyway, here I click on this particular image. And there is, there is a little thing that looks like a tag, like a price tag. That's a keyword. That's telling you there's keywords here. So I put my mouse pointer over it, and it tells me, keyword tags attached, bike trail Saganash. And that's actually from the Saganash bike trail. And I had entered that. 
All right? Here's a picture with no keywords. Here's a picture with, oh, my window is just shrinking. Um, this one has no keywords. This one doesn't. Now this one here, scroll down, looks familiar. It says edit in progress because Elements doesn't want you to make changes to the image while you have it open in Elements. So I'm going to switch and close these, all these pictures. Not going to save. That's a neat safety feature. Now there they are. All right. So here is the one with the keywords. Please ignore this one right here that we're looking at this one. And I put my mouse pointer over it. It says keywords attached, boat boy, man child. All right. And then here's some more keywords. And these are the ones that we entered. Now the other ones are, actually I had been playing around with this earlier and it added them and it's reading that as well. But they're all here. Now let's say we have these two pictures. All right, we have this picture and this picture. And we know, we know that this man is the father of this child. So that's my dad. That's a picture of my dad. So we know his name his last name is Bond, B-O-N-D. So we can apply that to both because they, they carry these names. And I click apply right here where it says keyword tag. And it gives you a little symbol that says, oh, I just flashed both keywords. Now if we look, we go, we do our mouse pointer there and we see keyword attached Bond. And we go down here, keyword attached, come on, Bond, there he is. All right. Now let's say I said, oops, you know what? That's actually incorrect. Let me do something right here. Male, or let me do female. No, let me do, let me do uncle. Let me do uncle. All right, so I, oh, I, I put uncle in both of these. Let's say I put uncle in all of them, on, or, or too many of them. So I select the ones with that uncle, and I use my keyboard. And here's a keyboard shortcut, sorry. I control click the tags and it gives me a list. Remove the bond tag, remove the uncle tag. I remove the uncle. And it removes the uncle tag. Now in Organizer, I open up this thing called keyword tags right here. Right here, keyword tags. And close this. I'll move this slider up here. I'm going to move this slider up here just so we can see more. And I scroll down. And I want to see just the images from 1970. I just clicked right here. And it hid everything except the images that had the keyword 1970. Now, I want images just with two people. Just with two people. I, there's a tag down here with two. I click that. There's two people. All right, now I want to try. I said, you know what, that, you know, Uncle Eric used to take us on this, the bike trail, some kind of bike trail. Well, let's click on this tag. Let's look for a tag called, oh, here's bike trail. Click on the bike trail tag. And only the bike trail pictures show up. Now keep in mind, I already assigned the bike trail tags to these, just like we were doing before, you know, assigning tags. I had already done that. And I could do it on mass, like here, by selecting, right? I selected all these, remember? And then we type in the tag, bike trail, and it applies it to them, all right? Now, uh, the nice thing about organizer is it, it, it lets you edit, it works with elements, so if you want to edit a picture, if it's a JPEG, let's say, and you want to edit it, it will actually just make a second version of it, which will be your edited version. I wanted to add that. And elements will pretty much, organizer will handle that with elements. It, it's, it's quite seamless. And it will show up as well, too. You'll, you'll see it. Um, there is something I want to share with you that is critical for those of you that use Elements. 
and when we have metadata, and you want to give someone a JPEG to email it, to post it on a website, whatever, all right? But you want to give it to them so that they have it. You should go to File Save As JPEG because, don't crash on me, because there's something called Save for Web right here. And Save for Web, sure, it makes the file much smaller for the web, but what do you think it does with your metadata? Gets rid of it. So never use Save for Web when you have metadata. Question. Share something with somebody, do you make sure that they can get the keywords, but that the identification? That's what you got to do. And you give them a TIFF, you can give them a JPEG, whatever, but watch out for that save for web or it'll strip it out. Um, so let's jump to something called Flickr. Anyone here ever used Flickr to share pictures? Good. I'm going to show you something real quick. And I want to show you how Flickr gets your, uh, how it displays your information. It's really nice because they've really revamped Flickr so that you can see the keywords. Picasa, it kind of, from when I last looked, it seemed to make it hard to find keywords or to see the keywords or to edit them. Like, for instance, to Photo Bucket or whatever to make sure that it's going to take the things that you want it to have. So, how do you know if Photo Bucket, Flickr is going to take your images? Well, they tell you they want JPEGs generally. You have to give them JPEG. Is that what you mean, file format? Well, well for, the, for the photo to go over, but how about your keywords and things? That seems to strip out of a lot of places where you're going to put it. Well, some of those places don't keep it. You're right. Some of them strip it out. Flickr keeps it. And here, Look at this that I just uploaded. Now I'm going to finish the upload here. It says, upload uh, one item with the following changes, public and tag. I want it to be public. I want it to have tags. I say, upload the photo stream, Mr. Flickr. He says, yeehaw. All right, so here it is. I click on it. And I scroll down. And here, down here, look at this, tags, bike trail, Green Bay Trail. Those are the tags I gave that picture, and it kept it. Now, when someone wants to search my Flickr album, they will find it. If they say Green Bay Trail, bike trail, or they're searching Green Bay Trail, they're going to see this picture. Now, I can set it to be public, and that would be a whole other workshop, because you've got to talk about just Flickr, how to work around in Flickr. But I, I wanted to show you that, and I thought that is so fantastic. And you can go in here and add a tag and delete tags. And now I'm going to take questions, and I'm so sorry about the time. Yes, sir? Uploading photos, do you know if um, Family Tree Maker or Family Search or My Heritage, do you upload photos to those? Do you know if I believe they're supposed to keep it, but I, I haven't been able to confirm because I don't have those accounts. I, if you really like this uh, workshop, I actually have my own evaluation. I'm going to put it up here by the, by the post, by my business cards. Please see me at booth 221 with anything you want to ask. But we have someone in the back who wants to wait. Uh, my question was just, are there standards for applying tags? I'm going to assume that somewhere, like archives, you know, maybe in actual archives, they have standards that need to be tagged. Yeah, yeah. So there's National Archives and other places where you would submit your work uh, for whatever reason. Do they have standards? And I, I don't know their specific standards, but if you contact them, they will. And I'm fairly certain they're going to be pretty much just like what I told you. That's it. You'll find. I've been doing it for a while, so yeah, that's it's like a habit for me now. But yeah, yeah. Sure. Unfortunately, I'm set up for your workshop, and I can't make it if somebody's interested. You know, oh, oh. Come see me. Oh, listen. If anyone wants to go to my workshop where you had to pay an extra to get a special ticket, we actually have someone here who is willing to uh, sell it to you for $2,000. No. She's willing to give it to you. Yeah. Thank 
you. Good job. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Where do we find the rules for punctuation and symbols that should and should not be used in keywords or descriptive in keywords? In here, separating words. I have a website listed at the at the uh, resources okay. in the handout. It's called Controlled Vocabulary, and I'll that is where you get. But pretty much, keep it simple. Is the general rule. Okay. Don't don't get too anxious about it. Okay. You know. Is this this is for the scanning class that they did that they had that. Well, folks. this is for the this is for people who have PowerPoint presentations or publications that they use images in, and I'm going to help. I'm going to work with people to make sure that their images look right going into their PowerPoint or their publication. Oh, okay. Yeah, that scanning one is okay. 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 Yeah. Just wanted to remind you that it's optical character recognition. Optical, not reader. Not reader. I'm mess I'm yeah. I work for IBM, so I just want to make sure you got <laughs> you, it. You could have said something. I didn't want to make you feel good. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all right. Have a good one. Okay. You're absolutely right. I can't believe I'm Enjoy it. saying that. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Would the Windows Explorer search engine such search the text and keywords yes. and everything? Yes, it's in properties. Okay. In fact, you'll see it in properties. You right, right. click I can, it. Yeah, I can, you, can, I, you can edit it there, but yeah. I didn't know how much of it they actually searched. And Elements will read it. Right, but I don't have Elements or any of those other packages, yeah. so yeah. all I have is just the search engine that's in Windows Explorer currently. So just keep working with properties, just make sure you're using the right fields, right. especially so, that keyword field. Right. Okay. So then if you import those keywords, you know, if when you get elements, would it import the keywords that you've added to Windows yes. Explorer? Yes. It'll, it'll give you that, that window that says, do you want these tags? And if you have a problem with that, definitely give me a call, because, you know, I've seen it done with Windows, so even though I'm on Mac. Photoshop and Photoshop Elements and the other one, where do you buy that software and about how much does it run? Photoshop Elements is less than $100, and you can get it almost anywhere, especially online.